Hello everyone and welcome to Story Corner Adventures and the second half of chapter six of The Wheel on the School by Mender de Jong. We just left Ilka bringing his wheel back to the school in Shora. He's hoping to make a proud entrance. Unfortunately, the wheel has come apart, so he's having to bring all of the parts himself. Right now, he is encased in spokes. He has all of the spokes of the wheel tucked in a rope that's encircling his waist. He also has the hub tied with a rope and slung over his shoulders and the other end of the rope also fastened to the one around his waist. And he is rolling the two rims, the inner rim and the outer rim along the rut of the canal road. Now let's see what happens. The iron rim rolling beside Ilka suddenly hit a big pebble in the rut and bounced up. To Ilka's relief, it bounced right back down into the rut. Then, all in one moment, the whole rim came apart. The inner wooden rim had come loose from the outer iron rim. The wooden rim had been made out of short, fitted sections. And now that one of the sections had let go, the whole rim fell to pieces. The sections clattered down and lay scattered along the road. Ilka stopped. He stood and stared in dismay at the trail of wooden rim sections. The iron outer rim rolled on by, by itself. There was a loud shout across the field. Watch it! Watch that rim! Ilka threw a startled glance at the field. It was Yella running toward him and shouting. Ilka whirled toward the item, iron rim. It was too late to do anything. The rim had jumped up out of the rut and had rolled across the road. There was a splash as the rim disappeared in the canal. Ilka's heart sank, but he ran to the canal. A stiff anger rose in him. If Yella hadn't shouted, he angrily undid the rope that held the heavy hub over his shoulder and let it drop. He looked at it as if he had a mind to kick it into the canal. Down the steep bank in the canal, the bottom mud came wheeling up where the iron rim had sunk. A few dirty bubbles came to the surface and broke. Keep your eye on the spot and don't move, Yella came yelling across the road. What'd you let it go in the canal for? Ilka stared bitterly at the water. It came apart, he managed to say. It fell into pieces. He pointed to the trail of wooden rim sections on the road. Yella looked at the clouded water. Is that where it went in? Yoka nodded. All of a sudden, he was too close to tears to trust his voice. He'd worked so hard, and now... Suddenly, he was angry again. He hadn't noticed until now, but Yella had his bow with him. He even had arrows for it. Yella had been fooling around with a bow and arrows. But Ilka said nothing. Yella carefully laid his arrows down. Now he stretched flat on the bank and poked with his bow down into the murky water. He got up on his hands and knees. I can't reach it with my bow, he looked up at Ilka. Can you swim? No, can you? No, but I was thinking. So here is the top of the grassy bank. You can see there's a very long drop toward the water and the water is extremely deep. Yella looked at, at Ilka encased in his wheel spokes, then at the hub lying on the canal bank. Hey, you could let me down by the rope on that hub. For answer, Ilka picked up the rope and yanked at one of the end strands. The strand raveled apart and broke in his fingers. Golly, no, Yella said. I'd be for the fishes. We've got to get help, Ilka said. Yes, but then we'd maybe lose the spot where the rim went down. Hey, I know, Yella exclaimed. Look, we'll use those spokes you got around you. We'll drive them in the canal bank like stakes, like sort of a ladder going down to the water. 
Then I can let myself down into the water by hanging from the bottom stake. I can feel with my toes for the rim. Look, we'll use that hub as a sort of sledgehammer to drive the stakes in. That iron rim's awfully heavy, Yoka said doubtfully. You couldn't pull it up with your toes. But Yella was so absorbed in his plan, he paid no attention. He untied the rope from the hub and drove the first spoke down into the perpendicular bank of the canal. A foot or so lower, he drove a second one. Hand me another, he panted. He drove a third spoke into the bank, but he couldn't reach any lower. Your turn, Yella said. Look, I'll hold you by your ankles and you can hang down the bank and drive in the lower spokes. It was almost impossible to drive stakes into the bank while hanging upside down. The blood rushed to Ilka's head. The hub was almost too heavy to hold with one hand until he had the stake started so he could hammer at the stake with both hands. Ilka managed to drive in a spoke. It scared him horribly when Yella let go one leg and picked up a spoke to hand down to him. As Yella stooped with the spoke, Ilka slid a little farther down the bank, a little closer to the water. It unnerved him. He managed to tap the spoke into the bank with a hub, but everything swam before his eyes. I can't anymore upside down, he said. The awkward hub slid from his nerveless hands, plunged in the canal, and disappeared. Ah, you clumsy fathead, Yella angrily said as he dragged Yilka up the bank. Now the hub's gone too. Can't you ever do anything right? On hands and knees, Yilka painfully crawled away from the canal's edge and sat down in the grass. Everything spun. Everything was cloudy before his eyes. He sat dazed. He hardly knew or cared that a cloudy, dim yellow had suddenly vanished from the canal bank. There wasn't a sound. Suddenly it scared Ilka. He crawled back to the canal's edge and peered down. He shook his head, shook it again to clear his vision. There hung Yella by one of the spokes, driven into the bank. He was down in the water, feeling with his toes for the rim. The clouds of mud he was stirring up were welling and circling around him. Yella saw him. Don't feel a thing, he said, but I can go deeper. He eyed the bottom spoke. If I hang from that last spoke, I can go way under and feel for the rim. I don't know, Ilka said. I wouldn't, Yella. I don't think I hit it very hard before I dropped the hub. But Yella was already gone, all of him except the hand that clutched the bottom spoke. Ilka stared into the rising mud clouds. Filthy black bubbles broke with a little sound. It made Ilka panicky. He looked at the stake the hand was clutching. Then, to Ilka's utter relief, Yella rose and dragged himself up by the stake blowing and snorting and spitting. Didn't feel a thing, he said. Gotta go still deeper. And down he started again. No, Yella, no, Ilka yelled. But Yella started to sink away just the same. Yella, don't, I'm not, Yella said queerly. I don't want to. He gulped, struggled up wildly for a moment and got his mouth above water. Yilka, I'm going. Ilka's horrified eyes flew from Yella to the spoke in the bank. The spoke wasn't in the bank. It was in Yella's hand. In a moment, the stake in Yella's sinking hand would be gone too, under the muddy water. Yella was going down with the loose stake. Ilka threw himself down the bank, down the little ladder of spokes. He clung to what was now the last spoke. That would be this one. This one's gone. He let himself drop into the water, clinging fiercely to the stake. He kicked out at what he could still see of the spoke in Yella's hand. Yella felt the kick and his hand clutched, grabbed, clung. With Yella dragging behind through the water, Ilka pulled himself up the spoke ladder, up by his hands, for Yella had a drowning hold on both his legs now. Ilka couldn't use his feet. Hand over hand, 
up the ladder of spokes. Ilka dragged Yella up after him, out of the water. His desperate strength seemed endless. It was enough for anything. Below him, Yella suddenly cried, Ilka, get off, get off, they're all going. Ilka threw a scared glance down. Then Yella let go. Ilka threw himself up the bank. He grabbed the first thing that came to his hand, Yella's bow lying there. He poked the bow down to the wide-eyed Yella. By now, this is all that's left of the spokes. Yella grabbed it. Ilka pulled Yella against the bank and held him there. Can you pull me up with the bow? Yella gasped. Ilka shook his head. Suddenly, his fierce strength was all gone and he was scared. There hung Yella in the water. There hung the spokes, all but the top one loose, almost dangling in the bank. He'd come up by those with Yella hanging on to him as a dead weight. The only spoke still straight and firm was the first one Yella had pounded into the top of the dry bank. Suddenly, Ilka took his end of the bow and hung it around the stake. He jumped to his feet. Yella, he said desperately, I've got to get help. I don't dare to try to pull you up by that bow. What if it would break? He looked all around, but there was no one near. No one. Nothing moved. Yella, he said, will you hang there very still? Don't put any strain on the bow. Don't stir. Will you, Yella? Then I'll run to shore and get help. Well, run then, Yella said desperately. Don't stand there talking about it. Run! His big, scared eyes stared up at Ilka. I will, I will, Yella, Ilka cried, but it seemed almost impossible to get started. It was an awful feeling to run away, leaving Yella behind in the still canal. I'm going, Ilka said. He turned and ran. He ran hard. He had to run hard to run away from Yella. Now Yella was back there alone in the quiet canal. Yella was back there and scared. Ilka glanced about him, but there was no help anywhere. Nothing moved. The road lay empty. The canal lay silent and empty. And Yella was in the canal. Suddenly, Ilka wasn't running anymore. He stood dead still in the empty silence. He couldn't run away from Yella. Yella was scared. Yella, who wasn't supposed to be scared of anything, was horribly scared. Suddenly, it struck Ilka. He could pull Yella up out of the canal. The rope would hold Yella. The rope had to, it had to hold. It had held the wheel for a long time, and the wheel must have been ten times heavier than Yella. He could pull Yella out because not only had the rope held the wheel, he had held up the enormous wheel while hanging by almost nothing but his fingertips. It startled Ilka. He was running back and he was startled because he knew he was strong. He might be slow and fat, but he was strong, much stronger than anybody knew, much stronger than he himself had ever suspected. Hadn't he held the wheel? Hadn't he dragged Yella up until the spokes in the bank gave way? He must be 10 times stronger than he'd ever known. He was back at the spot on the canal and was peering over the edge down at Yella. Oh, you're back quickly, Yella said gratefully. I didn't go, Ilka said. I came back. I'm going to pull you out now. How? Yella asked anxiously. But Ilka had no time for talk. He knotted the two pieces of rope together, the one from his waist and the one from the hub. He tested his knot. Then he tied a slip knot in the end, made a big loop, and dropped it over Yella's head. Now he tested the lone spoke in the top of the bank. He braced one foot against it after kicking off his wooden shoe to get a secure hold against the stake. Now, he ordered Yella, let the rope slide down over one arm, then hang on to the bow with the other hand and let it slide over the other arm. Easy, he warned. Do it slowly. Don't jerk around and get panicky. 
Yella obeyed. He moved cautiously, not putting any unnecessary strain on the bow as he changed positions. The moment the rope loop dropped over Yella's chest, Ilka drew it tight. Now, he said, I'm starting to pull you up. Don't struggle. Hang like a sack. But the rope's no good. That strand just came apart like hair a while ago. Yella was scared. The whole rope will hold you. It held the wheel when I let it down out of a high barn, and that wheel is ten times heavier than you. And I can do it. If I could let down that wheel, I can pull you up. He made himself sound much surer than he felt, for Yella's sake, because Yella was scared. But Ilka, don't talk, Ilka said shortly. Up you come now. He planted his foot against the spoke. Hand over hand, he began tugging the rope up. Hand over hand, all his weight against the stake, not dragging and grinding the poor weak rope against the bank's edge. Ilka set his teeth. While Yel Yella had been in the water, it had gone easy, but now all of Yella's weight hung from his arms. But keep the rope clear of the bank. Don't let it grind. Hand over hand, just pull, pull, pull. Suddenly there was no weight. For an awful moment, Ilka expected to hear the sound of a splash again. The rope must have broken, but there was no splash. Yella had grabbed the spoke in the top of the bank, and now he flung himself up. He threw his legs up and around and rolled over and over away from the canal. Ilka suddenly lay down. It felt wonderful to lie there, knowing he had done it. Done what he had intended to do, and done it just as he had planned. He had been strong. The rope hadn't broken. It was a wonderful, proud feeling. Yella had got up, and now he leaned over Ilka. Golly, Ilka! I never knew you were so strong. I didn't either, Yilka said, looking up at Yella. I was just thinking about it. I guess that's what comes of being the baby of the family. They think you stay little. I guess I must just have believed them. My dad and big brothers, they always did things before I could because I was little. I was the baby. Some baby, Yella said gratefully. Suddenly they grinned at each other, but it was awkward. Yella didn't know how to say how grateful he was. Ilka could almost see him poking around in his mind for the words. They grinned at each other again. Golly, Ilka, you may be slow, but I, I never knew you were that strong. You could be in our games all right. That strong. Ilka knew it was Yella's way of thanking him. He jumped up. You know, I was thinking, we'd better grab up all the spokes and rib sections and take them to school and tell teacher. We'll leave that one spoke in the bank for a marker so we'll know the place. Then maybe with a long rake, we can drag for the rim and pull out the hub too. Yella obediently went to the road to gather up the scattered rim sections. Ilka piled the thick spokes on one arm Together they went down the road to Shora, dripping water with every step. Every now and then, Big Yella looked at short, fat Ilka trudging sturdily along beside him. He shook his head as if he still could not quite believe it. Some baby, he suddenly said out loud, and Ilka grinned. That's it for today. Our next chapter is going to uh, follow Auka as he goes down to Nest to see if he can find a uh, wagon wheel there. And he has an interesting type of success and failure that will make another very long chapter, I'm afraid, but it, it is an, uh, a very good one. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you again on Story Corner Adventures. Bye now.